Greetings. Welcome to ITR Live. I'm your host, Chris Hagano, and we are here in Studio 130 in the uh, palatial Central Iowa offices of ITR. I'm back here with John Henderson and Chris Higgstad for another fun-filled, action-packed episode. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Bef- all right. John, welcome. How are you today? <laughs> Doing all right. Okay, good. Chris. I'm excited about this new microphone. I was going to say, it's new gear day. It That's is. right. Okay, you guys got, you got, we all match together now. Yeah. Okay. I, f- I feel like Cousin Shadow at this point. Cousin, I don't, I don't know the reference. Shadow, Shadow Stevens. So, oh, so, yeah, so big, yeah. That's, big okay, pop, yes, gotcha. Okay. Big yeah. pop culture in the 80s. He was on uh, Hollywood Squares and he was the host of American Top 40 for a few years in between Casey Kasem's yeah. uh, reign there. Uh, Shadow's my, my cousin and he got a start uh, on a microphone, I'm sure just like this one, uh, at the family uh, radio station in Jamestown, North Dakota. So Wonderful. Well, for those of you that are, are not watching us on video, uh, we, uh, we now have all have matching microphones and cool stands, and uh, John's already decorated his. Um, he's, got a, he's got an America flag on there. So John's very comfortable back there. He looks good with the flag. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to sit with this thing and, and it's, it's not, you're really stiff right now. Well, you're really straight upright. And it's like, this is serious business. It's but easier to adjust myself than adjust. You're, this you're the stand, one that so. wanted a new microphone and, and now you have a new microphone, but you've got to step up your game. I hope everybody understands that the sarcasm in this next statement, <laughs> but I just figured everything I had to see say was so important that I wanted the listeners to hear it clearly. And I feel like the old microphone wasn't always picking me up again. Please hear the sarcasm in that statement. People, <laughs> Um, no, nonetheless, we do have nice, good mics. It should work really well. Good. Okay. Well, we've got, we got several things to cover today, gentlemen. Um, we'd like to start out. I'm sorry. Can I, yeah, please. sorry. Let's yeah, just, no, let's no, just no, take no, over no. here. Um, let's do our first, uh, listener giveaway. Um, oh. the, the first, first, uh, first listener, uh, to correctly tell us when we can find Matlock on me TV. Um, we'll send some ITR merch. So, so folks, I don't know how one would contact us, Chris or John. That's not my department. Yeah. But, but however one would contact us, the first correct answer, when Matt Locke is on MeTV, John would appreciate knowing. And uh, if you tell us, we'll send you some ITR merch. So, <clears throat> yes, John, we, we, and, and it's good merch. And we, and we yeah. were in here, like, it's going to yeah. be worth your while. So come in. Help. John needs your help. He needs, he needs to know when he can watch <laughs> Matt Locke. I, I prefer murder she wrote but i is that on there i don't know these are oh. the these this is what we're gonna have to crowdsource the I thought listeners that anything have to tell us. anything post mash yeah was too new for me tv i like mash in my mind's the only show that's in color on that station but maybe i'm wrong you know let me tie this together i think shadow i think cousin shadow does some of the voice promos for me tv oh so that is why that, that, well, full yeah, that, circle that here full already. Circle. There we go. Well, John on Me TV. So moving to what you are able to find, you know, watching Mash mm-hmm. the other day. Um, did <laughs> do you want to touch on on what you're seeing on Me TV, or do you want to move on to uh, what's well, on KCCI on the Mothership? Oh, well, we can move on. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Um, <laughs> so we have our. <laughs> We're back for our first, our, for our regular uh, segment that we have here on the ITR Live podcast, which is what has John seen on KCCI? And uh, over the weekend, uh, John fires off a text message to, to keep us on the loop. So tell us what you saw on the KCCI news. Well, there's a lot of good stories, but uh, the one that, uh, that uh, caught my attention was uh, our state auditor, uh, Rob Sand, is doing a 100-city tour across Iowa, trying to educate Iowans on this. Uh, I won't say law because it hasn't been signed yet, but it's a bill that passed the legislature this session that reforms uh, the uh, <clears throat> the auditor. I think specifically what it does is uh, make it more difficult for him to collect personal information. Right, and just so we're clear, that the state auditor does is not principally tasked with auditing individuals mm-hmm. is, is with auditing it's, government. Yeah. And in fact, our state auditor, not actually an auditor. Right. Also, and, and but, j- just so we're clear that if there is individual fraud of th- that, that's actually a, 
a something that would go to the attorney general's office, not yes, the state yeah, auditor's that's office. So yeah. so somehow anyway, I just want to make that that, and, that clear that this and, is already sort of a And so the the auditor is making the case that this is uh this legislation is curtailing his power and and will potentially threaten uh exposing wasteful use of taxpayer resources and so he's been traveling around to various towns to to bring awareness to this and sounds sounds exciting like so, I, I would take the family and the kids to it so so you know, tell it tell us about this town hall meeting that was covered on the news well it was a uh, you know i i should have wrote the town down because i don't remember it was, it. It was mount air mount air okay, okay. <laughs> which if you're not familiar <laughs> was, is is southern iowa down close to the border with missouri pretty much straight south of des moines and it looked like it was in a courthouse or maybe uh uh, civic center, but it was a uh, old, old, older room, auditorium style, auditorium, kind yeah. Of, yeah. And there was maybe five, less than ten people there. I uh, couldn't see any more than five yeah, in the frame at any yeah. time. And so there was not a whole large turnout. And and of course, the auditor Sand made his case why this potential new law would be detrimental to his office and the ability to do audits. Which why was I, the? I mean for. If five people showed up in Southern Iowa, why was Central Iowa News covering it? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I, look, I, I believe. Do they want to? Are they just? Are they trying to be regular contributors to the ITR Law podcast? <laughs> they just want to give us material. Yeah, maybe. Right? I look. I I think as you told me, and then I ended up seeing this later, John, because we watched the Channel Eight News in my house too. But um, if if it was such a big event. It's such an important issue for our local media to drive an hour to hour and a half away to cover. Why were there only four people in the audience? I, I, I mean, I, I'm kind of curious who decides what stories they're covering over mm -hmm. there. I guess just that's interested. My, my point, like, what? Why yeah, go to that. Yeah, I don't know. That's, and I don't know. Maybe the, I've been to Mount Air, pleasant community. I don't know that that's where I'd kick off my hundred city tour. Um, I'd I'd want to kind of make a splash, go to a more populated area, but hey. But okay. uh, KCC, I was there to to bring it to us. I I wonder if they'll be there for the other ninety nine, but we will have to That's stay right. tuned, wait yeah. and see, right, John? I'll let you know. Okay, good. All right, so <clears throat> on to a little bit of policy that that we've been tracking was uh, what the legislature did on property taxes this year, and so there's actually a. a, a <clears throat> a point here that that I think listeners need to be aware of. Wait, wait! Listeners are shocked that we've actually got a point. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there, there's an action point. There's here. there's there's a merch giveaway today, yeah. and there's an action yes, point. Yes. So all right. breaking all sorts well, of new ground. Okay. So inside of the property tax bill, there were uh, of all the different pieces we've talked about with transparency and consolidation levies and notification, all those things. There's a couple of new exemptions extended. And one was for senior citizens, another for veterans. John, Chris, either one of you, explain how that works and what whether Iowans need to, on what piece they need to take action right now. Oh, I'd, I'd love to. I, just, I do too much talking. You guys need to just sort of fill in here. You know, if you don't want to listen to us, the foundation has a great article about it up. Uh, yeah. Just so. And I if you didn't get it in your in your ITR watchdog newsletter, that's what that's what we're here for. You can you can dig in uh, all you want, but but look, they essentially extended um, the the exemption program, uh, the homestead program for veterans, and uh, veterans already have uh, one of these programs. It just got uh, extended. So assuming a veteran is already receiving the current uh, exemption program, um, that will just be be increased accordingly and 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 good to go, and you'll receive uh, some tax relief that way. For seniors, they will have to go apply for that. Uh, it is a new, uh, technically a new homestead exemption. There is a form that has to be filled out and turned into your local auditor for most folks, uh, or excuse me, assessor. Uh, for most folks, that is a county level assessor. Go to your assessor's website. Uh, and it will have instructions on, on how to print out the form, on, on if you have to bring it in in person, if you can send it in electronically. Uh, I think that's up to each assessor's office to, to decide how they want to handle that. Um, when, when I have looked, um, like in Dallas and Polk counties, credit to those assessors. They are trying to put that information front and center. They are trying yep. to be helpful to tell you how to do it. Um, but it, th that's the key is 
seniors will have to take action to get this additional property tax relief. The first, it, it, it's kind of phased in uh, first year. And what it does is it, it reduces your taxable value uh, right. a little bit. So so you have that much less property that's subject to taxation and should result in some some decent property tax relief for, for kind of the average senior homeowner. That's right. And, and so the process, and I, my assumption is it works. You buy a new house, you, you go to the closing, they remind you, make sure you go file for your homestead exemption. Mm-hmm. Same process with getting the new senior exemption, more or less. Fill out a form, make right. sure that you're 65 plus, make sure it's the house that you're residing in, yeah. uh, that sort of thing. Right. Off you go. Um, July July 1st is the deadline, though, to, to get but, that in. Yeah, just just a, some of the, more or less the scope of this. The military exemption is, is roughly doubled under this. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the senior one, I think, once fully implemented a couple years from now, is uh, LSA the average benefit would be two hundred and nineteen dollars. Yeah, and, and so it's it's a meaningful piece of money. And if your house is is valued more, the the benefit's going to be uh, right, maybe a little bit more. Right, depending. Okay, so if you are if you're a veteran and you're already you've already filed for the exemption, get it great, you get more. If you're a senior, you need to go do it. We. We believe that Iowans should take advantage of every tax benefit available to them. Yep. However, John, this is where I want you to chime in a little bit, is that, you know, this might not be the way we would have written some of the tax benefit, right? Yeah, I think that's a good point because, uh, you know, another thing where listeners can go to itr.org and look at the five principles of sound tax policy. So I think it's, I think it's taxrelief.org. Oh, it is. Or okay. itrfoundation.org. <laughs> yes. You've, you've, you've merged not, the two together. I'm not giving... <laughs> we, may have, we may have lost I, John for the rest of the I time. stand correct. <laughs> Don't tell the communications department. <laughs> but, uh, I mean... And one example of this was what happened Sunday when I was in church, and there was a a lady who made an announcement about telling fellow seniors, you know, in the congregation about make you know make sure you a- apply for this this credit. Now, and, before we go any further with that story, I mean, let's full credit to John's church for having tax avoidance strategies announced during the service. Yeah, I mean, that well, like, <laughs> well, this. It was it was before, but uh, uh, this woman I was sitting next to basically said, "Well, why doesn't it apply to me?" And I think this brings up a she, problem. She was not a senior citizen. She was not a yeah. senior. She was probably in her forties, maybe early fifties. So fairly young person. Fairly young is. person. And uh, and this morning, one of our colleagues shared a Facebook post where a person asked, "Well, why? What about farmland?" And and so here here's the problem that. When you start exempting special special groups or special classes of people or even businesses, it, it basically results in a tax shift to others. Right. And and so that that's the well, problem. So the best tax policy would provide relief for all and not specializing one group or another and not favoring one group. That is particularly true when a broader spending control is absent, right? So if, if you're not really reining in their ability to tax and spend, you're just protecting a few groups. You're right. Yeah. The unprotected groups like the three of us at this table um, have to pay for our share of the increase and those folks who have then been protected. Mm-hmm. So again, like That's right. not critical of seniors or, or veterans or anyone else who, who gets some of these additional exemptions or carve outs and, and good for them. But but we're missing some folks, and, and, and to your point, John, the best policy would apply to everyone. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so we've made that point, but, but by all means, if you are uh, 65 or older, you should absolutely go out and, and take advantage of this, of this new benefit. Yeah. I sent it to my parents twice. Yep. I, yeah. Okay. It's a reminder. My- we should do it at a personal level. If you're not 65, make sure, you know, tell your, tell your parents or- Neighbors or whoever else that, that needs to take advantage of it. Yep. So that's good. Um, John, you also had uh, some polling numbers mm-hmm. that that uh, caught your eye yeah. recently. Yeah. This on. Was, <clears throat> I I don't know when this poll came out. 
from the Pew Research Center, but I thought it was interesting as we head into a, uh, in a presidential election year, but basically uh, what Pew had surveyed is basically they surveyed Americans looking ahead to 2050, and what they see is a large percentage, large majorities of Americans are very pessimistic of the future, uh, where the United States is heading both from an economic standpoint and from the U.S. position in the world. For example, 66% believe that the U.S. economy will be weaker than it is today. 71% believe that the U.S. will be less important in the world. 77% believe we'll be more politically divided by 2050. And so it's a very pessimistic outlook of, of where we're heading. And basically those uh, surveyed thought, you know, better times were behind us. And, and so I think it's very interesting because this probably, you know, if this, this mood holds, it's not very good for President Biden uh, as, as it's a snapshot of, of, of his record, really. I, I agree. And these are interesting, I think, because it's cast really over the long term. It's more of a generational views mm-hmm. of often you see those, what well, do you think you're in the next year or in the past year and the more of an immediate sort of a thing. But I think the, the outlook becomes even more grim when you ask someone, okay, once we get out of this economic cycle, will we be better off? And if they're saying that, then, well, then, then you have a real fundamental disbelief in mm-hmm. the American dream almost. Yeah. And <clears throat> there's, Bits and pieces of that, I, I probably share those sentiments, John. I, I think we may very well be more politically divided in the out years than we are today. But And I, I'm interested to get your guys' take on this. I actually think over the long term, maybe not our best days, or, or but I, I think this country can still be economically prosperous and grow and be a leader in the world in the coming decades. Uh, what what are your what's your take on that? I I don't know. I tend to be more pessimistic. We know, John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it I I think it all depends on what what policies. But I, you know, for example, I I think we've uh, we've really hurt ourselves by and and uh, especially by following so called free trade policies that have outsourced most of our manufacturing have left us overly dependent. On foreign nations, it has decimated the middle class. It it has uh, um, you know had other consequences on, especially here in the Midwest. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be hard to overcome that. We're seeing some good signs of some industry coming back and and uh, uh, sort of an awakening, thankfully, of policymakers that. It's actually a good thing to make things here now, mm-hmm. but we still are facing an uphill battle. For example, you know, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but uh, President Biden and his radical Green New Deal mm-hmm. agenda wants to convert, but yet he won't let us mine the metals that we need for that. And so, uh, you know, we're not, you know, the the policies that we're on, whether it's uh, preventing mining. We're, we're, hamstring, preventing, we're hamstringing ourselves on some yes, of these things. Yeah. These are self-inflicted. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. the other thing, too, is uh, 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 the other thing, everyone is concerned about immigration right now mm-hmm. and the, the massive invasion at the southern border. But what, what people forget is not just border security, but uh, the illegal immigrants lead to cheap labor and, and cheaper wages, and, and that also hurts the middle class. And so I think... You know, where I'm hoping, especially as we get into this presidential year, that uh, regardless of who these candidates are on the Republican side, they pay particular attention to issues of trade and immigration, because I think those are key to our economic future. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, how, at what level those issues elevate in the presidential campaign. I know we're going to be talking about China a lot. In this presidential well, we've run, you know, massive trade deficits with China, and, and uh, yeah. this was just a consequence of foolishness of of the free traders that I would argue are just nothing but 
ideology because they said, let's give most favored nation status to China, which we did in 2001. We threw open our markets. And what happened was, you know, we had a flood of loss of manufacturing jobs, including jobs here in Iowa. We also saw the result of, uh, uh, you know, China basically saying we're going to play by rules and that, that never happened. China did not democratize as they said we would. You know, our, our foolish actions have built China up and now we're paying the consequence of that. Boy, since the, since the website stumbled, John has decided yeah, not to mince, he has decided not to mince any words. I, there is. <laughs> I, th- I thought it was the new jingle on the sound pad. Once I got yeah, that, that a couple of those in, I, <laughs> we do whatever it takes to get John motivated. That's right. Yeah. Well, we've been getting a lot of a lot of really good feedback from podcast listeners about some of John's rants. Mm-hmm. Like they they're really starting to look forward to them. So I I yeah. think it's great. I think you got to come in here, come in hot, fly the, you know, red meat, John. Yeah. That's what that's what the listeners are coming here for. They they expect <laughs> it out of you. I don't I don't, you know, without breaking down John's argument policy point by policy point, I I, I share his pessimism pessimism about most of those items. But if the, if the bigger question is America's sort of standing in the world, and that can be on a number of fronts, uh, I mean, part of part of us falling from those positions is meaning somebody else has to step up to be yeah. number one. And I'm not sure who that is yet. And even China, for all they've got going uh, militarily and economically, I'm not sure they're really ready to, to take that position yet. And so, again... A lot of bad stuff, especially in the near term. I guess I still would bet on American exceptionalism in the long run. And frankly, um, man, there are a lot of, of countries and, and economies, you know, if you want to think of the Eurozone as one, um, that are doing things just as sort of self-inflicted yeah. as, as we are, right? So, so you know, t- until we see someone else being the, the, the ready to step into number one, I don't know that I'm ready to say that we are going to vacate that spot anytime soon, despite the missteps we keep taking. I uh, I think that's I think that's where I'm at. I I think our biggest challenge will be that division and the battle within. I think and and if when we decide as a nation that we are going to do something, we we succeed. Yep. We just do. When we can't decide what we want to do or what the right path is, that's where we start to falter. Yep. And I think you talk about our economy being hamstrung by certain things. Well, the underlying that message is that what happens when it's not hamstrung? What happens when the shackles come off of the American economy and American exceptionalism is allowed to shine through and the American people innovate and build and create? And that's why I think at some point when we're talking about 2050 or whatever that timeline is, we will have a phase where Americans are allowed to do that again. And I believe that we will that we will have that period again if we can survive our own domestic divisions and challenges. Sure. So that's my take. Good. All right. How are the new microphones, gentlemen? They sound good. I think they're nice. I think I'm getting a little more comfortable back here if yeah. it's gone so on. It might be know. better for your posture. Yeah, we'll see. We'll go to the YouTube. You know, you could, if you really want, you can, you can see that the, for those of you that, that can't see it, what, what Chris really wants here is to sort of hold the mic rock star style and, or, or I would take a Madonna headset. Yeah. Well, we were going to do that too. I don't know why. I don't know whatever happened to that, but now we've got these cool ones that go on the, the, the boom arms and it just doesn't make for, for handheld and it's going to take some, take some adjustment out of you. Okay. So I think you can do it. Old dog, new tricks. All right, good. John, anything else today? No, no. Good. Well, I, <laughs> the uh, the listeners appreciate you uh, you coming in strong today. Well, I, I hope I don't confuse anybody who wins the contest by uh, giving yeah. out the wrong email. Yeah. Did just, we, did just, we somehow, give... just somehow get us the Matlock Times, please, people. Yep. Matlock Times, ITR merch. So let us know. Go to taxrelief.org, itrfoundation.org, but not itr.org. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find a way to reach out to us there. So, all right. With, that, with all of that, we're it's time to sign off. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to leave us a five-star and some reviews. And with that, we will see you next time.